Talk about what this season has meant for you and I mean the success you guys have had. I mean, what's what's been different? Yeah, I mean, I think bringing back a lot of guys from last year that, you know, we went to the Western Conference final with was huge. Um, it's a lot of really good guys on the field and off the field, and I think a lot of us are wired the same way. Um, so one of our, you know, team principles is being ultra, ultra cohesive on the field and off the field. And right from the jump, it, it, it's been that. So there really wasn't that much of a, you know, an acclimation period, uh, especially with a lot of the new guys coming in. So I think uh, the team did a really good job building a core group of guys and, you know, bringing in new guys to, to fill roles that departed last year. What do you think you learned most about yourself, the way it ended last year, and how did you bring that into this season? And how has it affected you this season? Um, I mean, ne never take anything for granted. I mean, I, I certainly didn't take anything for granted last year, but when you make it to a final, and regardless if you win or lose, it might be the only final you ever play in. So obviously losing that, it gives you a little more motivation uh, to make it back there. You know, I'm sure if we won that, I'd probably be saying the same thing. It gives you more motivation to get back there. So I think either way, when you make it to a final, you, you get a taste of that success and what it means and how close you were. And, you know, when you're that close and you don't make it, it's like, damn, man, like, we could have had this. This could have been our story. But instead, you know, the ending was a little different. So I think going into the season, uh, you know, especially in the offseason, I thought a lot about the final. Um, and, you know, I think just bringing, you know, a final mentality in the training every day into every game is going to prepare us for those games at the end of the year. You've been here numerous times. Does this locker room and the energy that's in there right now, the confidence that's in there right now, does it feel different than previous previous seasons? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the first time I was here was in 2020, and we had a great locker room, great group of guys, um, you know, guys from all over the place, and you know, all, all great personalities. Um, but it was a really short season. I think we had what was it, like 15, 16 games or something like that, and then we, you know, lost in the first round. To a, a handball, and you know, it cut the season short, which was pretty disappointing because I thought we had a special group there as well. Uh, and then last year I came, came back midway like, through the year, probably it was like a year to the day, three or four days ago. Um, and I came into a really great locker room. Everyone was super welcoming, extremely talented. Uh, and that showed on the field, especially in that second half of the season. And, uh, you know, we carried it through to the final. And then this year I think it's, uh, you know, everything is really coming together earlier in the season than it was in previous seasons. So I think right now, obviously, we went through a little little slump in, in August. Um, but you know, up until that point, we've been firing on all cylinders. And I think it was a really, I think it was a blessing in disguise, maybe. You know, a little wake-up call that uh, you know, we need to pick it up. This is the business end of the season. And we've been in first place for a while. But the only reason why we've been in first place is because we've been doing everything that we need to do to get us to that point. It's not, we're not just going to stay there. There's a lot of talk right now about you and, and, and get earned, well, not just earned, but winning the MVP. You obviously earned all the accolades you're getting right now and all the attention you're getting. What, what, uh, what is it in your mind? What, uh, what goes through your mind when you, when you hear MVP talk and your name attached to that? Um, I mean, first, it's, it, it is flattering. And at the same time, it's very humbling as well, because there are a lot of really good players in this league. And I think a lot of guys are deserving of that award. Um, you know, I, for me, I don't think it's a distraction, but I can see how, how it would be. So, you know, for me, it's just kind of compartmentalizing everything and just doing what I know I need to do to be a better player for myself and to perform at the highest level every day in training to, to win games. And, you know, the accolades that will come at the end of the year may or may not come, but I have no control over that. So my job is to be the best teammate I can, the best player I can for the team and the best leader in the locker room so we can win a championship because I'm not here to win the individual awards. I don't think anyone is, and I think everyone will would say that if you asked every player. Uh, you know, we think we'd all trade you know individual awards for a team championship because those are those are really special. So, um, you know, it's been nice to hear, but at the same time, you know, it can't can't rest on that. Nothing. We haven't won anything individually or as a team, so we just got to keep keep pressing on and, and keep doing what we've been doing to get us to this point. When when you do hear the MVP talks and it comes from that side of the field, and you're, you guys are this you know monster stopping opposing offenses. I mean, what, talk about the, the defense that this team has and, and how, how you guys have worked together to just give you that, that, uh, that top spot in the standings. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, especially people who aren't super familiar with, with soccer, it's, it's more of a team sport than, than other sports. You know, an individual can really affect a team. Um, but since there's more than five guys in the field like basketball, everyone has a bigger part to play. Um, and it takes more for one guy to stand out. So I think the biggest thing for us, especially defensively, has been just the work rate from every single person on the field. And that has been what's won us games is, you know, our, our defense when we don't have the ball in the offensive half and the defense in our own defensive half stopping goals. So when I talk about defense in the offensive half, it's 
the strikers taking the ball from their defenders and cutting out passes and you know making it so we're able to play in their half and I think the strikers have done a really good job of doing that the midfielders have done a great job and obviously in the defensive third the defenders and the goalkeeper have, have been outstanding this year and so it's just something to keep building on. Do you feel that uh, the opposition is gunning for you more I mean now that again because I may be top but you're also the top team do you feel like they're kind of, you know, coming after you a little bit more as, as the season winds down here? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, when you're at the top, there's always a target on your back, regardless of the industry that you're in. Uh, everyone wants to be the top dog. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of teams that are fighting for playoff spots. So everyone's in a different position. Everyone has different motivations. You know, a lot of guys are motivated to make the playoffs. And for us, we're motivated to win a championship because that's the position that we're in. Uh, we're very fortunate to be in that position, but at the same time, we, we've earned you know, the right to, to be where we are because we've, we've worked that hard and um, we've put together those results to put ourselves in this position. So obviously being number one is great, but it, it makes it that much harder, especially during the biz business end of the year. You talked a little bit uh, a moment ago about the hiccups in August. And in the last three games, it's a win, it's a loss, it's a draw. What's it gonna take to, to correct some of these little, these little things and finish the rest of this season? out on top and for sure with home field advantage throughout the playoffs? Yeah, I think uh, it was a big wake up call for everyone as, as a collective and on an individual level. Uh, I think I said it, said it last week after the RGV game, it, a lot of guys need to look at themselves in the mirror, myself included. So everyone just needs to bring their best every day. And you know, it you know, wasn't a great month. So we're fortunate still to be in first place. And like I said earlier, we can't take it for granted. So everyone just needs to, you know, rewire themselves as to what we were at the you know the first three quarters of the season which is what got us here which is that relentless attitude relentless preparation effort all that stuff we need to keep doing that and get back to our roots of you know what what made us a great team what's been a top moment for you this season is there a particular game is a particular moment is it the save or the what 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 has been the top moment for you in 2022 Honestly, there's been a lot, but I mean, scoring that goal against RGV was pretty special just because, you know, it was in the last minute against our rivals at home, um, you know, the, just scoring at home and being, being at home in front of all, all these fans is, is truly special. And uh, for me, that, that was a big moment for the team and, you know, for, for me personally. So, I, you know, I was super happy with that moment. Um, but also Jordan Farr's save against Austin when he was just sat on the ground and just put his hands up and, you know, Jesus helped him out on that. and. Uh, yeah, that, that was an amazing moment. It was great for the club, great for the city too. I was super happy for the city of San Antonio because you know everyone's such a good person here, and um, it's just such a great community, and everyone deserved that. Um, <clears throat> last year, season ends on the road. You, you've seen what this place can look like when it's loud. You know the crowds are with you. You saw what it was like against Austin. What would it be like to have that kind of crowd, that kind of home field advantage? not just in the, in the final, but in the championship. I mean, what, do, you, do you guys ever talk about that? Like, hey, we really need to you know, secure these wins to make sure that we can have that moment when we need it the most. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, I, I think going back to last year, what was disappointing was that we didn't host the final, but it, it wasn't in our control because we didn't have the points to host. And we don't want to roll the dice and you know drop points like we did last weekend, which we probably should have picked up three points and look back and say, ah oh, man, we we really messed up in August and that you know what made us play this final on the road. So the fans here are electric. It's a true home field advantage and every, everyone knows that. Uh, that crowd gives us so much energy, especially when things aren't going our way, to keep pushing through and it, it, it's huge. It's like having the 12th man and I, I truly believe that. So we need to you know stay focused, especially through through this run of games in September and especially going into Oakland, who's a very tough team uh, and a tough environment as well. So all these games are important because home field advantage can you know ultimately help us win a championship.